Hello and welcome back. We are going to design another neural network uh, in PyTorch again, but this time using a very different strategy. As I said earlier, uh, PyTorch allows us to create different levels of complexity of neural networks. You can practically code from very scratch, like write every optimization step by yourself in PyTorch. And then we introduced the NN module that made our job a bit easier. And now this time we're gonna use something completely different and we're gonna solve a slightly more complex problem uh, using a multi-layer perceptron. So uh, as you would recall from our previous discussion, all this is simply uh, code to convert, to port our variables over to CUDA or onto the GPU and convert them into tensors and back. The problem that we are going to solve is called MNIST classification. So we are going to do digit classification and we are going to use something called data loaders in this uh, that makes make our job really easy when interacting with large data sets. So we know that the, each of the digits is represented by a 28 by 28 matrix. So the total number of features that we are gonna get is 784. So our input size is 784. We will have 500 neurons in the hidden layer. We want 10 outputs, one corresponding to each type of digit that we have. So that's why the number of classes is equal to 10. The number of epochs, that is the number of times this neural network is going to pass through all of the data is five. Uh, the batch size is 100 and what that means that a neural network is, our neural network is going to pick 100 examples and perform a single weight update. So that's what this batch size parameter means. And then we've got a learning rate parameter that we've specified as 0 0.001. And what we do is we, <clears throat> uh, fortunately the, uh, the, uh, the PyTorch library comes with MNIST built-in, so we don't need to download it or uh, ourselves. So what we do over here is we, Create a training data set. Now this is what is called. Uh, so we are going to we are going to create convert this MNIST into this particular data set that we are going to use for training. It's going to be placed in a data directory in the current folder called data. This is going to be used for training. That's why I specified train is equal to true. We will need to convert these numbers once this data has been downloaded automatically. We will need to convert them to tensor. So that's why this is this transform simply specifies that I'll be converting all of this data to tensor directly. So I don't need to explicitly do that. And this download is equal to true simply means that if the data is already not there, it's going to be downloaded. We do the same thing. We uh, have the MNIST data set. We're gonna test on the same data and we are gonna so specify train is equal to false is uh, does that for us. We create two data loaders. We create a data loader for the training data set. And this is where you specify your batch size. So it's gonna pick a hundred examples. So the role of a data loader is that it automatically gives the neural network a hundred examples that I've specified as the batch size from my given training data set. And I can also shuffle the data, the data and uh, by specifying shuffle is equal to true. So a hundred examples that are picked are going to be completely random. So that's what this means. And then when we have the test data set, we have another data set that we, we created over here. Uh, and that is going to be, we create a data loader for that. Then we design a neural network, not using the NN module, but we're using, uh, um, uh, by, the, by creating a class or an object of what we call net, you can give it an any name you like, which is derived from, so this is inheritance in Python, uh, that is derived from this NN.module and we can specify, this is again the representation bit of our machine learning model. We can specify how many layers it has. So I want a fully connected layer. It's going to have uh, input size, which is 784 and then 500 neurons in the hidden layer. So this is going to be a matrix of weights, which we call a weight layer. And then we are going to apply a rectified linear activation on top of that. And then we are going to pass it over to all of these outputs from all of these hidden layer neurons into all the 10 neurons that we are going to have at the output. So I welcome you to draw this structure so you can understand it a bit better. But essentially we would have uh, 784 inputs feeding into 500 neurons in the hidden layer and then those are gonna give their output to those 10 neurons at the output layer, okay? So that's what this is gonna do. However, specifying these layers doesn't connect them automatically. That is done using the forward function. So the forward function takes an input passes it through the first layer, computes an output, which is then passed to the rectified linear activation function. We compute the output of that and we pass it to the activation function or to the, to the final layer or FC2. And then that output that is generated is, is returned from the model. 
So all this is doing is specifying what components the neural network is does it has and how they are connected to each other. So this is the representation bit. We we create our network over here. We pass it. We convert it to CUDA so that it can go onto the GPU, and we specify a loss function. Here I welcome you to explore what this loss function is. It's a very commonly used loss function for optimization problem for classification problems. It's called a cross entropy loss. And it's really important that you understand how this works without me telling you how it works. Okay, so explore this on your own. Uh, that is the criteria that we have. And uh, then we have an optimizer over here, much like that we had in our previous discussion using NN module. Uh, we specify what parameters we want to optimize over, which are essentially all the parameters in my neural network. We have a specified learning rate over here. And then we have our training loop. We set the model in the training mode by specifying uh, this parameter. And this is a this is really useful for a large variety of neural networks to specify that we are in training mode. Okay, uh, we're going to have a bit more discussion on this when we talk about residual neural networks, because there, if you don't specify this, things are going to be messed up when you do testing. So it's important to let uh, PyTorch know that you are in training mode. You take a single epoch, and a single epoch you pass through a single batch. So what this loop does is this is the epoch loop. It's going to go through all one epoch at a time. And this epoch over here is going to take, you're going to use your train loader. And what this loop is going to give automatically is it's going to pick whatever batch size you have specified in your training loader. It's going to pick that many examples together with their labels. So images are going to contain those images. And then you have those labels from your data set. So it's going to pick, let's say, if you have specified a batch size of 100, is going to pick 100 examples at random since we had set shuffle is equal to true. So that's what this is going to do. We are going to convert these to tensors. That's what this these two things are doing. And then we compute our, we pass our inputs through the model net, through the model. We're going to compute their output and then we are going to compute the loss and then I'm going to perform the optimization. So this is the evaluation bit. This is the optimization bit, just like we've done. And we can monitor how much error it has by simply plotting the loss versus the versus the number of epochs or versus the number of iterations. That is going to give us give us an idea of the convergence of our model. And then once we have trained the neural network, we can test it. So for that, we had a test loader that can. In this case, we had the same examples from MNIST. So it's essentially training over the testing over the training data set. But you can, in ideally, you should have. Uh, so in this case, we had a test set. Sorry of 10,000 examples, but ideally you can have any uh, any test set, okay? So you have a test loader over here. We take, just like we had examples being picked in batches from our training data set, this is gonna pick examples 100 at a time or whatever batch size you specify. If you have a large GPU with larger memory, you can pick more examples uh, and it's gonna be a bit more efficient. But if you have a smaller GPU, you can pick a smaller number of examples and then what this does is first flattens it, computes the output, computes the prediction, and then simply prints out how many examples are being correctly classified. You can also save your model. In this case, we have trained over about, I think, 60,000 examples, or sorry, 50,000 examples, and tested on 10,000 examples with a classification accuracy of 97%, which is pretty good. So this, you can see, is a very different implementation. We use data loaders over here, and I welcome you to use them in your own implementations when you're training multi-layer pressure crops. Okay, so PyTorch allows you to essentially go at different levels of detail when you are training your machine learning models or neural networks. Thank you.